Hello and welcome everyone. Today is a commentary about uh, a debate uh, called Islam versus Theism between the Professor Lawrence Krauss and uh, Hamza. I am mainly going to focus on Hamza argument uh, because that's why I'm interested about Islam argument between the Theism and see what he's going to bring for this argument. Let's start it. إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. To proceed, respected Professor Kraus, guests, brothers and sisters, friends, relatives, I greet you with the warmest Islamic greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Look, look, you have a lot of friends down there. I think nobody dare go into. Rose up and give him a, a question. He's gonna have an easier ride on this debate. And first time, people who don't know what means salam, salam in Arabic, you know, just for Muslim, not for non-Muslim. The Prophet said, "Do not greet the Jew and the Christian." And here as well, other religion as well get in before they greet you. And uh, when you meet any one of them on the road, force him to go to the narrowest part of it. Which basically means, may the peace and blessings of God be upon you all. Today, uh, 17th century caravan robber, he never said that. He always say you go into narrow with narrow with them in the narrowest part and humiliate them in another hadith. Uh, this question, Islam or atheism, which makes more sense? I would argue that if we use our reason, our rational faculties, we will definitely come to the conclusion that Islam makes more sense. And I'm going to use two simple... So how are you going to come to the conclusion that Islam makes more sense? The Prophet, when he arrived in a donkey flying in the sky, does it make sense? Uh, nobody see him when he was in the Jibril coming to him. Does it make sense? Nobody was, the, was with him in uh, a cave. Nobody was with him. So how it makes sense for you? Maybe it will make sense for you because you're Muslim and you're born like this. But me too, so it was making sense be before because I was forced not to question, the, you know, to question the Islam. But when you start questioning, then you start, you start penalizing you for that one. So how are you going to make sense? Simple arguments to verify that claim. Argument number one, Islam makes sense of the origins of the universe. Argument number two, Islam makes sense of the nature of the Quranic discourse. So let me go. Both of them is wrong. How the how Islam going make sense for the origin of the universe when the, in Hadith Sareh that the sun going to do sujood in in the Arsh of Rahman in the throne of the Rahman? How it makes sense? Let's see what he gonna bring. You know. Straight to the first argument that Islam makes sense of the origins of the universe. Now, we all have had the same type of questions, well, most of us anyway. Why does the universe exist? Why is there so, something? So all these Muslim apologists, when they start debating atheist, atheist people, they left the Islam jacket home, and they come to you with deistic, they, they believe in our God. I can't tell him one simple, if I'm uh, Professor Krauss, I will stand up and tell him, sorry, but I, I believe something, what's going to change? You know, what's going to change? You know, if I believe there is a God, mean I have to believe in Islam, that's, that's wrong. You know, he started, you know, he want to make, a, like like they say, a straw man, so he going to attack him. So <laughs> that's just so wrong, you know, it does not make sense. Then nothing. And in response to that question, the grandfather of neo-atheism, Bertrand Russell, said, the universe is just there. And that's all. It's a brute fact. If he said that, everybody entitled to say, you know what he say. If, if I am atheist or, or I am theistic or that, I'm not following uh, like you. You have a script, a script to follow. You have orders to follow. You have to pray. You have to do. You have to do. We don't have this one. Darwin didn't tell us, you know, give us a script. You have to do this. You have to do that. You have to understand the difference here, my friend. Even in Islamic history, as early as the 8th century, we had philosophical naturalists known as the Dahriya. They held similar views. 
Now, the implications of these historical opinions is that the universe is eternal. And if the universe is yeah. eternal, it... Al-Dahriya, when, when Al-Dahriya was coming, is a long way before, you know, there was the verse Quran, لَنْ يُهْلَكَنَا إِلَّا الدَّهْرِ And it means they said, we're, gonna, we're not going to die, we're not going to die until the, the time going to kill us. So what's the answer of the Prophet? He going to jump in the, the waga and go to somewhere else and without giving an answer the, when when that time there was people they called Dahriya what's the Prophet answer to them you know that's why we need to know <laughs> first tell us what the Prophet answer to these people then come up uh, he think like the that time there was Dahriya and God come in and give them answer no he didn't give them answer listen what they say وَقَالُوا وَمَا هِيَ إِلَّا حَيَاتُنَا الدُّنْيَا نَمُوتُ وَنَحْيَا وَمَا يُهْلِكْنَا إِلَّا الدَّهَرِ they said this is our life no no going to the nothing going to kill us only the time the the prophet or Allah prophet said dahar the time is the Allah, Allah he is the time and if he said that to them then they're gonna they're gonna insult the time and the time is Allah and he said Allah said you Dini ibn Adam Yusubu Tahra wa ana Tahra biyadil amru uqallibu layla wa nahar he said people insult me by uh, by insulting the time and i am the time i have to, uh, everything in my order and i take the night and i bring the day it implies there is an infinite past but the question is can we have an infinite past does the infinite make sense in the real world now, the assertion that the universe has an infinite past is absolutely irrational. This is because the quantum... Nobody believes there is infinite past or infinite future. But just I say, he making a straw man so he can attack him. His argument, if we don't believe in Islam, that we believe in the infinite time and the, and the universe was there forever. How you make this assumption? I don't understand. Are we... In to have to must believe Islam or believe this way? No, there is a lot of option there. You misrepresent, my friend, my, the, the argument. Pliable infinite cannot exist in the real world, something our beloved Professor Krauss has also suggested in his book, A Universe from Nothing, on page 71. He says, clearly, the energy of empty space, or anything else for that matter, cannot physically be infinite. So we have to figure out a way to do the calculation to get a finite answer. Now to highlight why the infinity or the infinite doesn't exist, take the following examples into consideration. Imagine we have, for example, an infinite number of Professor Krauss in this room. And so again, you know, this is what the, the, this Muslim apology do. They just go around and around and around. You know, what is the relationship between this and Islam? You know? That's what we want to know. What is the relationship? Where is your proof? Where is your evidence from, from the Quran and from the Hadith and Sunnah? If I were to take five Professor Krauses away, how many do we have left? Well, some mathematicians may say, well, we still have an infinite number of Professor Krauses. Logicians will say, we have infinity minus five. But what stops me practically removing five Professor Krauses away from this room? Nothing. And if I do, there should be less than infinite but there isn't, therefore it leads to absurdities and contradictions. It just uh, bullshit, bullshit and bullshit and talking, 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 talking without giving, you know, that is not your, our business, you know, if there is infinite universe, if there is one universe, if, if there is ten infinite universe, if there is infinite God, that is not our problem. We don't believe Islam, and I said, Islam is a bullshit and bullshit, that's all I can say. I am 5,100% sure that Islam is not right. Does not mean that uh, I'm sure that there is no, uh, another God down there. I don't know. That's my answer. We don't know who is down there. Take this other example into, ex into consideration. My distance between, the distance rather between myself and Professor Krauss. We can potentially split this distance into infinite parts, but I can actually traverse the finite distance. 
We yeah, shall... where is this uh, science in the Quran? Can we bring this science from the Quran? Or have we see any anything coming from the Quran? You can't even make your own shoes. You can't even make your or toilet paper. You can't even make the the brushing teeth. You taking the Quran to a whole level that not like, like that does not fucking deserve it. That level you taking the Quran on. It's just a, a rubbish bullshit of, of paper and full with nonsense. I can't prove them to you here live once by once, verse by verse. If you give me any verse, I won't tell you how bullshit this is. I can make very easy uh, Quran, but you know, you tell you do this one, but if you do it, we kill you. As Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, said yeah. that the, the infinite is yeah, really so far. never actualized. And in light of this, mathematicians Kasman and Newman said the infinite certainly does not exist in the same sense that but we say there are. Who is who is now believe that there is infinite, but this called infinite, but infinite? There is opinion. I know we live 150 years, 60 years. We don't care. You know, if there is infinite universe or not, we just know that Islam is not. Is not from God. That's all. Prove that Islam from God, and then we can progress to other other talks. A fish in the sea, and this is to our deductive argument. Yeah. For those who don't know, a deductive argument is. So he gonna bring deductive argument to prove that God exists. Let listen his argument. The conclusion that necessary follows from its premises, and to deny a valid and sound deductive argument is equivalent of denying reality. So listen to the deductive argument. Number one, an actual infinite cannot exist. Number two, an infinite history of past events is an actual infinite. Therefore, an infinite history of past events cannot exist. Yeah. Therefore, the universe is finite. Therefore, it had a beginning. Therefore, there is Allah. Whoa. Come on, Allah. Let's continue. Now, this is a deductive argument. Yeah. No what the... Complementary evidence. Yeah, this is a deductive argument was where is Allah in this picture? Where is Allah in this picture that he make the <laughs> either they make all the, the, the universe either in eight or either in seven or maybe uh, four. He doesn't know or five. He doesn't know exactly where is he. That's which I call astrophysical evidence and I'm not claiming to be a physicist we have an established acclaimed academic amongst us so he could tell us yeah. the rest of the story but what have cosmologists said yeah. <laughs> shooting with Niazik, shooting the jinn. I know jinn. Does, does jinn anybody believe in jinn? Believe another creation? Believe, he said, believe in science. Where is the science in the jinn? You know, these people afraid to go to toilet, people afraid to go to, 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 to scoop water in the toilet. And even Rasul tell you, tell you, if you want to feed your, your friend, your friend Jin, you have to get bones. When you finish food, you take the bones and you put them by side so the Jin can have food to eat. So this is makes sense, my friend. They have said, for example, Alexander Vilenkin, in his book, Many Worlds in One, which I believe is a friend of Professor Krauss. He says, with the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. There is no escape. See, almost 11 uh, minutes talking, but we don't see any proof from the Islam, you know? He talking with the, with the European and with other uh, philosophers, scientists, but he never bring anything from the Quran or Sunnah to tell us where is this Allah hiding? They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. And just to note, even Professor Krauss in his book affirms a beginning to the universe. Interestingly, in Islamic thought, this has been discussed at length, and there is a unanimous conclusion that the universe is eternal. It began in the finite past as okay. the polymath. Okay, then we have the beginning. The Christians said as well, the universe have beginning. The Jews said that the universe have beginning. You still didn't 
make your argument you are wearing jacket of deism any any god my god his name shalolo he doesn't care he create this universe so take it from my mouth you can see his creation you can see all oh, this is him you know yes it's him how do you know he told me that yesterday and i believe it Ibn Taymiyyah wrote in the yeah. 14th century Ibn Taymiyyah. book as Safadiyyah. So whatever is besides God, it is all makhluk, all created. Ibn Taymiyyah write a whole book, especially this book, or Safadiyyah, write a whole book to say nothing. He's uh, replying to Quran, the big the scientists uh, Arab that time. They all the the, the thing that uh, the West or people who are uh, like joining Islam as like uh, they don't know Arabic, they don't know the, all this Ibn Sina, all this is atheism. You no, know? all of this uh, is Mortadin, apostate. None of them, none of them is Muslim. All of them accused blasphemy and all of them book have been burned or or then uh, some of them have been killed some of them get imprisoned so uh, even it me I uh, have nothing to say he writes a book just to say nothing if you like this please give me a thumbs up and think about subscribing until then have a good one and wait for me for the second part is coming soon